Hi, I'm Kelsey. This video is for Create More, Fear Less. The things we're doing together are projects that are about care with distance. This illustration and idea was drawn by an artist who I admire. His name is Taeyun Choi. So thank you, Taeyun. Um, the projects that we're doing together are creative ways to do things with and for the people we care about, but with distance. Um, and we're going to use this time to think outside of what we normally think about and remember what we love and appreciate about the people around us and feel connected to that. Thank you for being here. Before we get started on our project, which is really fun, um, I want to take a moment to do a worry release and just take what's up here and put it down on paper so we can set it aside for a moment separate from us. I'm going to share what I wrote. Fire. Right now, there are a lot of fires nearby where I live and it might look like nighttime but there's a window right here and outside there's not very much sun coming in because the sky is orange so that's a worry that I have and I'm gonna set it aside for right now so that we can enjoy this time together and feel good and productive and get back to other worries after a moment of pause, because it certainly makes me feel a lot better to do something productive and creative. Okay, so can I tell you about this project? This is a machine that records your time. And you might be wondering What? That's not a timer. And what is this timer for? And I'm going to say, well, you're right. It's not a timer, but it's not a usual timer. And you're wrong because it is an unusual timer. And this is a timer you can use when you don't want to have someone else's idea of time that you spend on something like someone tells you you have 15 minutes <laughs> or be done in an hour. Just forget about that. Because this timer is about when you do want to set your own limit so that when you're thinking about something, you have that time to think about it and then you're gonna set a limit so that for yourself, you'll set your own time so that when you're done, you're done. And it's a lovely way to let that feeling out and see what's happening. And the way that you let that feeling out is by um, a couple things. It's a timer that you set the intention for what you're gonna think about when you set the timer. And, the f and then you have these markers that are gonna bleed out onto the paper. And that's in the end, when you are done with your timer, you lift it up, you turn the timer off, and you get this ink that has been coming out onto the paper the whole time your timer has been on. And then you have this special image of that time. That's how you set your timer, set your intention, and then you have this when you're done. We're gonna make that. Okay. Oh, and it's inspired by real artists. Remember Taeyun? He had this project where he made a special machine where people could set their own time and it was their own unit of time. And I thought that was really lovely. It's also inspired by this artist, Daniel Etok, who comes up with these, he came up with this way of, um, putting markers using just something to help hold markers in place and put it on a stack of paper 
so that it could um, bleed out and make um, images that are different with every layer inside a stack of paper. So we're going to combine those two things to make our timers. Now we just need to get all of our supplies together. The things you're going to need are something to just put down so if marker goes through all your stack of paper you're not messing up the table. You need some oh, markers that are not special because you don't want to use all the ink in your special markers and they should all be the same size. So like this and this are obviously not the same size. I prefer the small ones because they're easier to smash through a box. You need boxes or a box. And I like a box that is, you need a box that is going to be thinner than the length, like this size is thinner than the length of your marker so that you can um, put it through. These are different types of boxes that I think have, are good and useful. You are going to need a stack of paper. Remember how I had that folded piece of paper? So you can take 10 sheets of paper that you fold in half. These are eight and a half by 11 sheets that I fold in half by matching up the end and folding down. Please pause this video at any time to go do your own thing, get your supplies, or pause in any steps or, and rewind when you need to. The next thing that is useful is some kind of paper that has a lines and or grid on it. Like this is um, notebook paper and this is graph paper. Both are really useful. Um, I ended up needing tape, so you might need tape. You, the last thing you need is either a pencil or a pen that is not special because you're going to use it to poke holes with and jab through a cardboard box. And you might break the end of your pencil and need to resharpen it. Those are our supplies. Now, here's how we get started making it. Take my box. I've, because you don't want to watch everything that I'm doing, I'm fast forwarding a little bit so that this is quicker. Um, I've written on my notebook paper a grid of nine dots. And because my notebook paper has the lines on it, I can make a line and then count equal length down and make the next line of dots. So I can tell that they're equally distant apart from each other. And I'm lining that up with my box. And I folded down the edge so that it's um, like this shape of my box and I make sure that my grid fits on there and I can use tape to hold it in place because I've got too many things to do with my hands at the same time. With that tape in place, I can now use my pokey pencil to poke a hole in each dot like that. You might have to use force where you like put your hand inside your box and you press down. Just watch your fingers on the inside. And the first thing you're doing is just poking a small hole. And when you have all those small holes done, then you can use more force and put the pencil all the way through because you need a hole that's big enough for your marker to go all the way through. And a pencil is not as thick as, a, as your marker. 
So you've got to gradually make your holes bigger. If you did it all at once, it would be just too hard. It would, if you tried to force this from the beginning, watch. That's what happens. It just doesn't work. So you need to go little by little, poke the small hole, poke the bigger hole, and then you can get the biggest hole. Okay. I've poked everything on this side of the box. Now I need to put the same exact grid on the bottom. The way you make it the same exact grid so that your markers can go through is you remove the sheet of paper from the top. Don't flip anything over. You just now place it on the bottom. That way the exact grid is going to come all the way through. And again, you can tape it in place. Now you can flip your box over and do the same thing all over again, where you poke your holes, you make them bigger, and now you have a grid that goes completely through your box. This was the hardest part of the project and you have just done it. <laughs> okay, now is the nice part. We're gonna set our timers. And remember how, you remember what this is for? It's for you creating your own time to spend with a thought or an intention that you're gonna set. This is the time. I'm gonna show you what I've done before. This could be a time where you, it could be for you, where you say, something's been on my mind, like that worry release, but you know, that's been on your mind and you really wanna let it out. You wanna spend time with it and then let it out. So you could, maybe you already know what's on your mind and you wanna let out and you can choose markers and colors that feel like they go with that feeling. Or you could do this for somebody else and share a connection with a memory or that person um, and put it onto paper and dedicate some time to thinking about that. And I did that here. What I did, I started off by thinking of a friend I miss, his name is Dan. And I chose colors for Dan. These are his two favorite colors, yellow and blue. Dan is colorblind. So blue and yellow are the colors he sees best. But I kind of thought it was funny because blue and yellow, when combined, make green. And everything, all my best favorite memories with Dan are green because they're outside and we do lots of hiking together. So I thought it would be fun to use yellow and blue, his favorite colors, and see if they, when I let them bleed out, made green. This isn't very green, but it was a fun experiment. And I let all of those colors out so that it bled and made all these different um, patterns over time in the paper. So I celebrated my memory with Dan and now I get to share it with him. So let's do that now. Let's, we set our intention Take a moment to think about what you want to spend your personal time on. And let's pick some colors. Today, I'm thinking about my memory with my friend Betsy. And we used to do a lot of walks together and we can't now because of distance that we need to be with each other. So I want to remember this one spot that we used to walk to together. And I'm thinking that I, it's always, we used to do walks in this big green park, but this is going to be like the sky in my memory. So I've picked blue. And now I'm going to do some, we used to walk when in different seasons there. So sometimes it was green outside, 
and sometimes it was kind of like yellow and the fall. So I'm going to pick some green colors and a little bit of yellow and brown. And these can be like the things that we saw together when we would go on our walks. So I'm putting all of my markers to go all the way through. And I've got my stack of paper here. I'm going to make sure that's nice and all in that stack. And I'm ready to set my timer. And the way you turn your timer on is you take all the caps off. This will be a little bit wonky just to get them off. They slide out just push them back okay here we go I'm ready to set my timer okay that's it it's set what I need to make sure is that all the tips of my markers are touching my paper so that it bleeds out. And that's it. I've set my timer. Eventually you're going to, now that my timer is set, I get to dedicate this time to thinking of this memory with Betsy and I'm really excited to share it with her. And when I'm done with my time, what I'll do is stop my timer by lifting it up and setting it off to the side and I'm done. And I can choose to share that with Betsy, which I think is a really powerful thing to do because it lets her know that how much, how powerful she is to me and I get to give that back to her and celebrate that and let her know what I like about my memories with her. So I hope you get to use your timer and I hope you might feel comfortable sharing what you um, dedicated your timer to. Thank you for doing this project and watching, and I hope to see you again for the next one. Bye.